Welcome to Counseling for Busy People and Advocacy Circle Next Door and most importantly, the podcast on Real Counseling. My name is Lisa Ryan and today I'm here with Tim Holstrom, uh, one of the smartest guys I know who like tells me when I am all wet about what men are thinking about, what men aren't thinking about, where they're coming from and I always love his take and today He's going to join me, and we're going to talk about a theme that, oh my God, I've talked about for years, and that is, um, it's an original idea, don't steal my idea or I'll get grumpy with you, because one day I'm going to write a book, and the book is going to be called Givers, Train Takers. Do you know what I mean by that when I say that, too? I have a, a sense of what you're saying. You're saying that uh, throughout a relationship, the people who are in it, they're either takers or givers, and, the, and that the givers give takers too much leeway. Kind of. What I mean by that is, and I think it's Pavlovian, mm. is that if a person continues to give and give and give, they will ultimately find themselves living or at least dating uh, a person who receives, receives, receives. Now, we all know in, in first grade, we are all taught to think, um, and maybe this has to do something, you know, with, with uh, organized um, religion as well, um, um, give and ye shall receive. And so I think we're all conditioned to think that way, but yet um, it's Pavlovian, actually, when you realize that if you've given a dog 10 bowls of dog food in a row, 10 days in a row, what do you think is going to happen on the 11th day? I know I'm going to be salivating for more. <laughs> there you go. Have love. Okay. Thank you. You see it the same way I do. Okay, but so many people think if I give and I give and I give and I give, then certainly they will give back to me. But I don't know about you. I've never had a dog that made a meal for me on the 11th day. Or the 30 seconds. The best dog I ever had was Jake, and he never did that for me. So <laughs> I'm guessing that doesn't happen often. Okay. All right. So you see where I'm coming from on this? Well, yeah. I mean, it's it seems like common sense, but I think you get stuck in a rut or a routine where you are playing a role. And when you play that role for too long, it, there's a cost uh, without without communicating uh, things that you might, might be bothering you or resenting to your partner. Your partner just stays being fed yeah and and so i meet so many times a week with people who are saying i live with the laziest slob i know and i will start taking apart their lives and how they do things and i will ask them to take 50 percent of the responsibility for actually conditioning their spouse or boyfriend um to expect to receive and i will let them know that they sh they're they're overgiving, okay, uh, and and accept responsibility for that overgiving, and probably most importantly, because I think giving rocks. I mean, giving feels just as good to the person giving as it does to the person receiving, sometimes more. But let the person that you're living with know what you expect. Yeah, the imbalance comes, I guess, when an enabler doesn't doesn't let the other person know that they, how much they feel they've been enabling and the person who's been enabled doesn't recognize or acknowledge or appreciate it. Yeah, it, it becomes like the rules of the house. Mm. And meanwhile, the giver is getting more resentful mm. and more resentful and more resentful. I mean, the first time I saw this happen, actually, it was well before I um, opened Advocacy Circle and, and uh, I saw my sister who was married, newly married, to a perfectly trained guy who did the laundry, who did cooking, who had stop and shop, and my sister was like appalled. She was like, you're not supposed to be doing that stuff. I'm supposed to be doing all that stuff. And like a year went by, and she was like saying to me on the phone, I don't know what happened to him. He used to do the laundry. He used to cook. He used to go uh, to the grocery store, and, and I was like, I remember this conversation. You ruined 
a perfectly trained guy. You wrecked him, okay? So you have to own that. I won't say my sister's name, but I only have one. You know who I'm talking to, girl. Um, and anyway, it's a family joke. So um, he he is the most giving guy in the world, by the way. Um, but she did indeed retrain him in a way that made her grumpy. And he just thought that he was doing what was expected and meeting her needs. You know, different lifestyle. You know, I guess... I when these things happen, they happen slowly, they evolve, and and I guess, you know, one way you could look at a relationship is you have, like, quarterly performance reviews where you evaluate these, these directions, these trends, um, and you don't necessarily want to call them performance reviews, but <laughs> <laughs> I know I wouldn't want to have a performance review, um, but it would be nice to have a check-in meeting and, and say, okay, what, what have where are we kind of going in a direction that's not going to be sustainable? And, and that's probably how this happens because, because you don't have those conversations. Uh, or maybe, as you said, that, you know, the, it feels good. It feels so much better sometimes for certain personalities to be the giver. They don't even think twice. And, and then this one day they wake up and realize they have a taker on their hands. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like having a wild animal. Uh, if you keep if you keep feeding it, it will keep coming back to your front door, even though it belongs out in the forest. Now, like the raccoons on my deck. Right? Yes, yeah. I you know I like I know as you know most men would have, rather be fed than have to do the hunting and gathering in the forest. And <laughs> so I, that's what you end up with: a domesticated <laughs> raccoon on your doorstep. There you go. And you know I feel really badly also for the takers because they come across uh, and they, they they put themselves across as like such selfish, single-minded, you, you know, takers when actually they were trained to be that way, okay? So I, I really think that the responsibility uh, lies with the taker to be more of a giver, no-brainer, uh, but it also 50% uh, falls on the person who's giving, giving, giving to stop giving so much and expect a little bit more. So like anything in a relationship, as I always say, a relationship is like a rowboat. You both have to row equally as hard or the boat won't go straight, right? Well, that's right. I think I think of the circus so I, I, or, or the Las Vegas stage performers. You know, when you're, when you're working with tigers and you, you've domesticated them and, and you've given them everything they want, well, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that they, one day they won't turn on you and you end up, you know, without a limb. Uh, Wait a minute. So who's going to be losing the limb here? The, the, the giver? Because they, they don't expect that, the, that this animal that they've domesticated still has a wild side that, that, that they didn't anticipate. And, and maybe resentful that they've been given food half their adult life uh, when they really should naturally be out foraging for it. Sure. Resent okay. I can see that. So the, the taker, when introduced a new set of rules, it will be grumpy and resentful, resentful. that they like the old rules better. Yeah, they like the old, old yeah. rules they resort, they, they, they revert to their natural instinct. <laughs> <laughs> next, thing, next thing you know, you got a tiger by the tail that you can't control. Well, do you think being a taker is, is a natural instinct for a man? No, I think no. A, man, a natural instinct should be a provider, but it, being a taker is certainly a, na a natural instinct for a Peter Pan man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, women are natural givers. They, you know, they can be people pleasers. They want to make sure that everybody has what everybody needs, sometimes at the expense of themselves, which drives me crazy, especially because. It generates resentment. Mm. And it's like, girl, who are you resenting? I mean, if everybody has a plate except for you, then get yourself a plate. Um, you can't blame everybody else who has a plate for the fact that you didn't get yourself a plate. Well, you turn in the martyr, and the man becomes the resentful tiger. Yeah, there and you go, what, martyr. What a weird dynamic. Great word. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. No, no. No, mar no martyr, no victim. Okay, just get yourself a plate and tell everybody else where the plates are and to help themselves, right? I would agree. That is, that is the way nature should, should work if, if we have plates in the forest. Okay, all right. So, when you were married, how often did you do the laundry? Tell me the truth. 
I, that was, it was downstairs, so I, I actually did often do that. Um, I, I was good with you know, domestic chores, but I was not observant about them. So the laundry could pile up, the plates could pile up, and other things. So I wasn't, as a man, I was very unaware of my, of my uh, domestic surroundings, but I was happy once it was pointed out to me. To, oh, I'm to, sure you were thrilled. Okay. Nice try. Okay. So you are lumping as a man. Mm -hmm. I tend not to observe yeah. Plates in the in the sink in the kitchen. Sure, it's, it's, well, well, what do you need to be more observant? Some sort of guidebook um, that that was given to me. <laughs> that would have been given to me at an early age. At, at, at this point, no, <laughs> there, there's no turning back. How about a fire poker? <laughs> uh, yeah, no men just have blinders on when it comes to domestic <laughs> chores. Uh, they really do. I don't care what you say. If, if you tell me that as a man you like doing the laundry or you. Or you like doing the dishes and you do it, uh, you know, with, with discipline and, 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 and vigor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you on this. That's, that's nonsense. I think, uh, I think men just, you, you know, you just have your, your roles in the house. Uh, you may, you know, and, and, and maybe those are assigned to you, so you take them. That's, that's do you I think, think women, like, like, jump out of bed in the morning with another opportunity to, like, do laundry and do the dishes? No, but they will notice if there's a dish out of place. <laughs> so they just cannot stand it. That is the only reason. Okay. So, I yeah, at least I should have had a manual when I was young to tell me things about all the domestic chores that were necessary and, and well-timed. Okay. What would the manual have told you? Well, it would have told me to, uh, to move a bit quicker uh, <laughs> than, felt nat than felt natural uh, in, in order to, uh, to, beat, to beat my partner to the punch uh, in terms of getting things done. Oh, okay. All right. Fair, fair enough. And maybe my manual would have been let people know what you expect so um, you don't feel disappointed because people can't read your mind. Um, so givers, train takers is, again, not something that makes um, a taker bad necessarily um, or, you know, a, a giver all good necessarily. It's just a responsibility of people who give too much and people who take too much to, like, recalibrate what's fair. Otherwise, uh, resentment will kick in big time, which is, like, a hard thing um, to break up, although I certainly see plenty of resentment next door. So, um, thank you, givers. Thank you, takers, for listening and joining us today and, and for getting the point of view um, uh, from a very honest and, and uh, giving guy, actually. So, um, thanks, and don't forget to subscribe or check the box or whatever else that you do. And um, you know what to do. And most importantly, though, I would love to hear from you. Lisa at counselingforbusypeople.com. Let me know what you're thinking. Thanks and take care.